ओम ज्ञान तिमृंदृश्यकुरुमृतमेनस्मृष्टिगुरवेन्दम सहगण रघुनाथीव साध्वत सवधूत हरिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधापद सहगंधिता श्रीशाखाता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका का राधा का नमस्ते सप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे नमो महाबदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौरतिषे नम पंच तत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्ता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्त शक्तिकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअदाधर श्रीवास हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद से यदित्रत चार्थ सुस्वरा तेने ब्रह्म हृदय कवे मूरय तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनय यो वृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमहे नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्ति अस्त विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्याय तो भूता शिव मिथो धिया मनस्च मनश्चद्रम भजतादोक्षजे आवेशतांग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत टेन टू टेन चैप्टर फोर्टी वर्स नंबर थर्टीन दिस इज कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द प्रेयर्स ऑफ श्री अखूर टू श्री नारायण इन द वाटर ऑफ यमुना so we read how he was describing various types of worshipers various processes they follow karma yoga gyan yoga sankhya yoga panchratra so out of and then he spoke about the guna as a prakriti how people are influenced by them and the worship of other devas in this kind that the people who also worship other devas but all this worship was to 
him, Sri Krishna. And that is because he is the source and he shows this in his Virat form in Bhagavad Gita. It's also described in second canto of Bhagavatam, first chapter, and different places that everything exists in him. But there are two ways of worshipping and that is Vidhi Purvaka and Avidhi Purvaka. One which is enjoined in the Shastra, another which is not. So although both gives result, but it is the one which is enjoined in the Shastra which gives the permanent benefit. So one should follow that. And the ultimate prescription is the prescription of Bhakti Yoga, although other Yogas are also there, but the special characteristic of Bhakti is that here we have the support of Bhagavan. We follow Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Sankhya Yoga, any other Yoga, then you have to just work yourself. There is no Bhagavan support in them. And Bhakti is completely dependent on Him. So that also is little problem because we are used to functioning with our Ahankara and thinking ourselves as the doer and get the benefit or result of our actions. But in case of Bhakti, one has to know this very well. Yetu Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparana Neneva Yogena Maam Dhyam Tapas Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matpara Here also this word came Tatpara yesterday, Tantara so that is the speciality of bhakti, that one has to be fully dependent on him. So in Gita also Krishna says that Mame Kamsanam But it's not easy because our ego, our hinkara comes on the way. And we always have the feeling that I am the doer very difficult to give it up. It's a big obstacle. Otherwise, Teshamaham Samudharta, Mithri Sansara Sagara, Bhavani Nacharat Park, Maya Veshata Chetasam. So, Bhagavad Gita Krishna keeps on informing this repeatedly that if your mind, if Chetas is fixed on me, then he takes care. So he gives, does not say this to anybody, he doesn't say for Jnana Yogi, Karma Yogi, for any other Yogi. So this is the purpose also of these prayers and we will see how Akrura will also end the prayers from So now in this two verses here, Virat Swarupa is being described. Agnir Mukham Tayavani Vangri Rikshanam Suryo Nabho Nagira Podishastrutihi Dyaohukam Surendrasta Vahava Navaha Kukshir Marut Pranam Balam Prakalpitam Romani Vrikshasa Dhaya Shiroruha Meghaha Parasparasthina Khani Tedraha Nimeshnam Ratrihani Prajapati Medhas to Vishtista Vidya Mishate. So Agnir Mukham. So fire is the mouth. So therefore your gaze performed in fire. Agni Nile Purohitam. Rigveda starts with this mantra Agni. Agni also means is the first. Agra Agra means first. It comes from that. He is the first Devata. So Agnir Mukham. Te Agni Rangri. And the earth are the feet. So Padam Eta Padamulam. Padamulam. 
you described as Patala. Ekshnam Surya, eyes are the sun. Nabho Nabhi, Nabho Nabhi, Nabhi in the navel is the sky. And Atho Disha Shruti, and the directions, they are the ears. How many directions are there? Mm -hmm. hmm? Ten directions. Ten directions? There is only one direction. If you have ten directions, where will you go? If you want to go somewhere, you need one direction or ten directions? <coughs> what does Park Sangra say? Right? Park Sangra says the direction is only one. Vigu Nidhvi Nityacha. It is all pervading and eternal. Everything else is just, it's like time is one. You make the divisions of past, present, future, one hour, ten minutes. It's only one time. Direction is only one. What is east can be west for somebody else. Hmm? So it's all relative, but actually it's only one. So therefore it says Vishashruti, because here he is using in plural. So, here is the directions, but for ear he is singular. The so sense of hearing are the directions. And Dyao who come. So Dyao means the upper sky or the upper planet, that is the head. Surendrasta Bahavo and the Devas are the arms. Arnava Kukshi. Ocean is the belly, Marut Pranabalam, the air is the Pranavayu, also the strength. Strength comes from the Prana, right? If you get a lot of Prana, you know, it's like in the tire, in the tire of your car, if there is air, it has strength. Take out the air, right? The air is going low, then it doesn't function properly. So the prana is, strength is from the prana. So Romani Vriksha Osdhaya, the trees and the creepers, etc., they are the hair on the body of the Rathparusha. And Siroroha Megha, the clouds, are the hair on the head. Parasya, Asthi, Nakhani, Pedre. The mountains are the bones and the nails. So those who are breaking the mountains, they are breaking the bones. Right? Or cutting the nails. Nimeshnam, Ratriyahani. And blinking opening and closing of the eyes, that was the day and night. And Prajapati, Medra. Prajapati is the procreating organ. And Vrishti is the And the rain is the semen. Because everything grows from water. And no water, nothing grows. That's why in the desert nothing grows. So let's come to the semen. So this is just a description want to meditate on the Virat Purusha. Kincha Vairaj Rupasya Tav Tete Deva Angani Eva Ato Api Tatta Deva Puja Taveva Puja Kya. So he says that moreover all these Devas they are the limbs of the Viraja, that Virat, the cosmic form. And in that sense also the worship of the Devas is his worship. Because if somebody massages your feet, then it is massaging you and it's pleasing to you, right? Somebody gives you food to eat, then you feel happy. So the Devas are different, different limbs. Agni Riti Kam Sira, the word Ka means head. 
ಕ್ವಯವ್ಯಾತ್ಮನ್ ಪುರುಷೆ ಪ್ರಕಲ್ಪಿತ ಲೋಕ ಸಫಲ ಜೀವ ಸಂಕುಲ ಯಥಾಜಲೆ ಸಂಜಿಹತೆ ಜಲೌಕಷಿಂಬರೈವಾಮಸ್ಕಾಮನೋಮಯ ಸೈ ಸೆ ದಟ್ ಓ ಅವ್ಯ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಪರಿಶ್ ಒನ್ ದ ಪುರುಷ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಪುರುಷ ಸೊ ದ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ different planetary systems along with their protectors and the various living beings who are residing in them they are all imagined within you they all exist in you so may te nateshu han krishna sejin bhagavad gita han je bade janmi am not in them nane se jan also in them kashyam yoga maheshwaram see my yoga, my opulence, I exist in everything, I also don't exist. So he gives an example, he says, yatha jale sanji hate jalao kasho, just like if there is an ocean, then all the aquatics inside that, they are moving within the ocean. Although they do not know this, right? The aquatics which are living in the ocean, they don't know that they are living in the ocean. they think it's just natural for them to be there only if they are taken out of it then they realize something is wrong right if you take the fish out of water then she understands the importance and she can see but when you are inside you don't feel that you are in water so that's how people are to to realize something you have to be little away from it if you are completely one with it you don't understand that's why brahman realization they don't understand what is brahman so they become absolutely one to know brahman also you have to have little distance so therefore vaishnava is also have brahman realization but kinchit bhedain in little jiva song writes this that their experience of brahman is not like their experience of the great one so to understand you have to have little not too much if it is too far away then also you don't see if it is too close like if something is very close to your eyes you cannot see it and to have little understand So these aquatics live in the water, therefore they don't know that they are in the ocean. But that's how everybody is in him. And then he gives another example, Udumbare va Mashaka. Udumbara is like a fig. So, Indian they have this plant udumbara they are really like fig only but not exactly and if you break it inside their insects have you seen the bigger yeah i've seen it. so you you open it bigger me me used to even write one tree is right outside krishna bhagavan temple and the cut it and this road was widened and sometimes they will fall down on the ground and they are ripe but I have seen it you open and they, they fly and this example is given in Briyadar and Nikopanishad also the example of Udhambara so that is comes here also so Udhambara is Mashaka Mashaka you know Maskai, Maskai means mosquito, comes okay, from this. In English you just add one T after that. Sanskrit it is called Mashaka. So, Dumbareva Maska Manomai. So, just like there is insects are inside this fig tree, fruit. So, they remain there inside it. 
closed. Like that you are inside this universe. And unless somebody opens it, you cannot get out. No matter how much you try. That's why you cannot get, become liberated by your own power. Because you are closed inside the universe. You can run here and there, like the fish in the ocean. You can travel but you cannot get out. So nanu evam chetarhi devayajino api madhyajina eva yanti madhyajino api mamiti madhyajina So now if Krishna is saying that if these people who are worshipping Deva, then Devas are part of my limb, then they are also my worshipper. And then I am saying in Bhagavad Gita that those who worship me, they come to me, yanti madhyajino api mam that those who worship me they come to me so some people Sanskrit is interesting language you know that so this madhyajino can also mean those who drink wine and eat eat goats (laughs) because it's madhya adhi Aja is goat, so he is madhya is liquor, so madhya is in a human. Interesting language, no? You can twist towards this and that way. So yanti madhya ajino thi maam. Somebody can make some tricks. So, katham te maam na prapnu vanti. So, since they are worshipping devas, and devas are my limbs, as you are saying, then they are doing worship to me. And if they are worshipping me, then they should come to me, because I myself have said it, that those who worship me, come to me. Right? Good logic. You have to know the logic. No one to argue. So then he gives this sloka. So Tvai Purusha Vairaj Rupe. So the word Purusha here refers to the Virat Purusha. The word Vairaja comes from the Viraja. The Virat comes from that only. So Loka Bhuradaya Prakalpita. So he says these are all these different planets that the feet are the earth, the face is the mouth, mouth is the fire, eye is the sun, etc. These are imagined like that. There is no actual person like that. Pala Indradi Devas Tat Sahita and the Pala means those who protect these Loka, called Lok Palas. So they are Indra. Varuna, etc., along with them. The word Sanjihate Prachlanti, so these aquatics, etc., they are moving around. Vaivartha, the word Va is in the sense of Eva, means like, like that. So, Udumbare Va, so like thing. Yathacha udumbar phale maskaha sukshma kitaha sankhyaha. So he said, just like in this fruit of udumbara tree, there are so many small, small insects. He said, the sankhya unlimited. Of course, they are not unlimited, but a lot of them really open it, they start flying around. So, Tvai Kidrishe, how are you? Manomaye. So, you are Manomaya. Mana Adi Akhila Tattva Maya Mai Kattvat Nashvare. So, this is the Manomaya form. That's why I use the word Prakalpita. Means it is imagined. Or it is the form made of Tattvas beginning from Mana, Manas, etc. And therefore, this is perishable form. This is not the imperishable form. So, idam hi vishwam bhagwan ivotare yadosthana jagatasthani nirodha sambhara. 
మనకి నారద ఋషి అని టీచింగ్ టు వాస్ ఫస్ట్ క్యాంప్ సో ఈ ఆల్సో సైజ్ దట్ దిస్ విశ్వ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో లైక్ భగవాన్ భగవాన్ ఈవ సేమ్ లైన్ దట్ బట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ మైక దట్ సై మైకత్వాత్ నస్వర ఇట్ ఈస్ నస్వర ఇట్ ఈస్ పరిశుద్ధ బట్ యూ ఆర్ అవ్యయ ఆత్మ హే అవ్యయ ఆత్మ యూ ఆర్ ఇన్ పరిశుద్ధ దట్ ఈస్ అండి so this is important to know because these things are very confusing and people may call kinds of arguments not understanding that what is this shastra is always contradicting itself one place one thing another place another thing you can never pin it down yeah the problem is that it's not as we think like this is table and this is book everything is manifestation from one that's why it's a bheda and a bheda it's not just different not just absolutely one so navya iti na nashyati na vyati na nashyati avya means that does not get destroyed or does not perish atma deho yasya so avya atman means that your body is imperishable therefore he sachidananda vidra so your form is eternal conscious and blissful tena anasya anaswarani sachidananda mayani rupani eva tat swarupani tani yajante eva paryadini so why he is giving this commentary he says therefore what it means is that only these forms which are sachidananda only these are your real forms and one who worships these forms only that person is your worshiper and others are not so others are worshiping but that is not really your worship directly indirectly everything is is worship but this is direct uh, worship స్వరాజ్ రూపం టూ తౌ సా మైకం రూపం దిస్ యూనివర్సల్ ఆర్ కాస్మిక్ ఫామ్ ఈజ్ యువర్ మైక్ ఫామ్ మీన్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ యువర్ మెటీరియల్ ఫామ్ మై డస్ నాట్ మీన్ లీసరీ బట్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ దైట్రోనల్ ఫామ్ ఇట్స్ మెటీరియల్ న స్వరం పరిశుభ్ర న తో తత్ స్వరూపం ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ యువర్ swarupa your own form atastadang bhutam devi ajino netvadyajan so therefore those who are worshiping these devas which are part of this material form they are not really your worshiper if they actually worship your limbs of your spiritual form they will be your worshiper but they are worshiping the limbs of your cosmic form which is a material form and because it is made of your energy that is a in a way your form just like you have your body and then you say this is my house this is my car so that is your car that is not you so this universe is also him because it belongs to him but he has his own individual form atah sadhu uktam yanti devrata deva therefore it was properly said that those who worship the deva they go to deva bhutani anti bhutajya madhya dinaman yanti ma ati so that is the understanding yani yani he rupani krinanartham vibharshi tai ram rishta sacho loka mada gayanti te yashaha so now he is making a distinction between this form cosmic form or the various devas his people worship and his own transcendental forms so he says that whatever forms you manifest for your leela for your pastime for your play they are the real forms and by worshiping them people become free of all grief 
अमृत सोचो लोग का मुदा हैप्पी वे हैप्पी वे वे अंदर सिंह या गौरीज ननु कढ़ी कानी मम स्वरूप भूतानी रूपानी स्वीकृति दास ननु के व्हाट आर माय स्वरूप भूता फॉर्म्स मींस माय ओन फॉर्म्स नॉट दिस मटेरियल फॉर्म्स दोज आर डिस्क्राइब्ड हियर सो यानी इति क्रीडनानी so those forms which you take for the play for your play play is to perform your various leelas such as avadhi santarana madhu kaitab hananadi so the form by which you crossed the ocean that is sri ramchandra or the form by which you killed madhu and kaitab demons so tadartham vibharshi so you accept forms or you manifest forms for this purpose nitya siddhani eva grinas so what does it mean that you accept those forms this is also problematic statement so you accept means before they did not exist and then you accept it so that is not the meaning The meaning when it says accept, it says ganasi means great or local kripya darshesh. That you make them visible to people. They are already there. Ata stair aradhi stair amrishta parimarjita shucha. So those who worship these forms, then they become free from grief. All their grief becomes wiped out. Amrishta means like you sweep the floor, like that your grief is swept away. So that is the only way you can become free from grief. People try many things to become free from grief. They don't work. Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, "Masucha," right? No need to grieve. If you become sanagata, if you take shelter of Krishna. Then there is no grief. Bhajan achhadane chinta vritha karvan ke vashnava. My vashnava has to have chinta. Food, flower, meat, that. But you have to be actually vashnava. In the true sense, not just in the name. If you are in the name, then you have to be chinta. Chinta means anxiety. Otherwise, for vashnava there is no chinta, there is no anxiety. Vishnu is free from anxiety. Absolutely, anxiety cannot come near Vishnu. As soon as anxiety sees Vishnu, it scares. Just like the mouse sees the cat, If the mouse sees the cat. What happens? He runs inside, right? Like that, anxiety runs away from Vishnu. If there is Vaishnava is having anxiety, there is some problem. There, if their anxiety is there, their anxiety will be transcendent. <laughs> Not this kind of anxiety. That is different. So therefore, it is said that Tair Amrishta Sucho Loka Muda Gayanti Bhavish. So therefore, happily, they sing your Fame, your glory. So people also sing somebody's glory, but they are singing because they are not happy, and they want something. And the Vaishnavas, they are out of happiness. They are singing. So with the avidyak shok moha deyo malayes, because this grief, shok, moha, bhaya, delusion, fear, anxiety, etc., they are products of Avidya, ignorance. And what is ignorance? Ignorance is ignorance of our own swarupa and our relationship with Bhagwan. So once we have knowledge about that, we understand that. Even theoretically, if we can understand and we have shraddha, then there is no need of any anxiety. 
How can that mean that we have anxiety means we don't have shraddha? Right? Just like you live, you have your parents, you are a small child, and you are having anxiety, will I get food next meal or not? But if you are your parents, and you are dependent on them, then you don't have anxiety. Like children don't have anxiety, right? Why? Because they depend on the parents. The same children, when they grow up, then anxiety grows with them. Right? More you grow, more anxious you are. Because now you are not dependent on parents. Isn't it? And when you become absolutely free from them, you leave parents, go away, then you are full of anxiety. Now anxiety has taken full hold on you. Right? So that's how the anxiety works. So even in the, even in the material world, if we are under the care of our parents, and we are surrendered to them, we are not anxious. Children, when a small child is walking with the father, she can, you know, chastise another child, hey, get lost. <laughs> she is he's holding the finger of the dad, you know? right? Jessica went and kicked this big boy, you know? The father said, go kick. <laughs> so she did it. Because she had trust that father is there to protect him. <laughs> so if this is the case with material father, what to speak when you have a spiritual father who owns the whole thing? How can there be anxiety? That's why these cowherd boys, when they saw this Aghasura with open mouth, they went inside. They had little doubt, is it a cave or is it what, what is it? So they went inside. He says, hey, Krishna is there. They had so much faith. Although Krishna is just friend like them, he's not their father or anybody. Not that he's very big in size. They fight with him, they defeat him. Right? When it comes to playing, they defeat Krishna. And he says, who are you? But when, when problem comes, then they are under his shelter. Right? When Indra sent the rain of this Vrasmasura came, they all went to him. So this is their complete surrender to him. That's why Vajvasis were not in anxiety. Their anxiety was Krishna is going away or anxiety, Mother Yasoda about Krishna. That is out of their love. This is different. So therefore this says Amrishta Shoka. So this grief is a very big problem here in the material world. And there is no solution for this unless one takes shelter. And this Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. So Gyatva Maam Shantim Richati. Knowing this, you attain peace. No anxiety. Sabrahma Bhuta Prasannatma na Shochati na Kangshati. You like the Prasannatma, blissful face. Nama Karana Matsya, so now he is giving some of the names of the Vyantara. Pralayabdhi Charayacha, Ayashishne Namastubhyam, Matu Madhu Kaita Bhaham Mirkyave, Akuparaya Brihate Namo Mandara Dharine Shiti Vudhar Shiti Vudhar Viharaya Nama Shukara Murtaye So Namaha Karana Matsyaya So first he gives his pranam to the fish. Fish of that comes first. So he is called Karana Matsya. So Karana Matsya means don't think that he is born from another Matsya. Matsya means fish. So he says, I bow down to you. Pralaya Bhicharai, who wanders in the water of the dissolution. That fish was going around with King Satyavrata's boat. Matsyavata. Hes Krishna Namastubhyam Madhu Kayatanam Mithyave. And then the Hagriva Avatar is there. Sadhara Sarvidhyanam. Right? 
its famous Madhva Sampradaya and Sri Sampradaya, they were worshipped high griva. So, Adharam Samvidyanam, high griva, Namas Upasmahe, Spatak, what is that? Spatak Atvipi. So, high griva is very popular in Sri Sampradaya and Madhva Sampradaya. It's supposed to be the source of knowledge. Because he also protected the Vedas, this Madhu Katas were two demons, killed them. They, they are the one who stole the Vedas, so he got them back. So, he has high means horse, horse hand. And then Akuparaya Brihate Namo Mandar Dharane. Akupara means ocean is called Akupara. Akupara is also Kurma. So we have the Mandar mountain on his back when the churning of the ocean was done. Because he was having itching. Sometimes when you, your back itches, it's problematic, right? <laughs> because you cannot reach there. You have to take some stick or something. So Kurma had a itching on his back, so he went under the Mandar mountain which was being churned. So he felt such comfort. <laughs> he enjoyed it very much. So he said Mandar Dharani. And Chiti Uddhar Viharaya Namashukar Murta and also to Shukara, to Varahadev, who uplifted the earth from the water because of this Hiranyaksha is from that. So Tani Eva Kani Iti Akanksha Yama hai. So what are those various forms to describe that he speaks this verse? Nama Iti Shadavi. So he speaks six slokas. So two we already read. Sarva Karana Rupa Iti. So it looks like there is a different reading. In the commentary, he has Sarva Karana Rupaya, so his ultimate cause is everything, but here we have Nama Karana Matsya. So, must have a different reading. Tadrupasya Nityatvadikam Abhikvaitam. So, to call it Karana Matsya or Sarva Karana Rupaya means that his form is eternal. Evam karnatvam agrayati jaya. So he says this should be understood for the other songs. Pralayabdhi charayati patra itastata chalna meva kridanam. So this matsya was moving in the water of dissolution here and there. That is his play. Because he says that he takes these various forms for his play. So in different forms he has different types of clay, so for fish moving in water is a clay. So that is Matsyavatar. Eva Magre, so he says this should be understood for all of us. So Madhumaya, Madhu Katab, Hananadini Eva Kirnani. So killing Madhu and Katab, this is also in Lila, Agrivalta. Akuparaya Kurmaya. So Akupara refers here to the Kurma, the turtles form. So Akuparaha Samudra Syat Kurma Rajayati Kirtita. So common meaning of the word Akupara is actually ocean, but according to Vishwakosh dictionary, it also means Kurma Raj, means the Kurma Avatar. Namaste Bhut Simhaya Sadhu Loka Bhaya Paha Vamanaya Namastukhim Kranta Tribhuna Tribhuvanaya Cha. So, my obeisance is to that wonderful form of Simha that is Narsimhade, which dispelled the fear of the sadhus and devotees. And I bow down to Vamandev, who Measured the three worlds with his three 
two feet only. So there is no comment on this. Namo Bhagunam Pataye Dripta Kshatra Vanachide Namaste Raghu Varyaya Ramananta Karayacha I bow down to the Lord of the Bhagus who cut the forest of the proud Kshatriyas. So this is about Parshuram. If you want to cut a tree, what do you need? An axe. So the proud Kshatriyas are compared here to a forest. Therefore Parshuram came with an axe in his hand and he chopped off all these trees of the Kshatriyas 21 times. So you cut the tree, it comes up again. And then he came back and he chopped it again. So he is a chopper. Chopped left, right, left, right. So those, all those Kshatriyas who are proud because this is the problem with power. When you get power, you become proud. Power is very intoxicating. <coughs> so, the Kshatriya kings became this Kartagiri Arjun. He was very powerful. So he became very proud. So Parasuram came and chopped him off. Everybody. And then Namaste Raghu Variyaya. I bow down to Raghu Variya, the best of Raghu dynasty, that is Bhagavan Sri Ram. Ravananta Karayacha, one who killed Ravana. So Ravana also became proud. There are stories of proud people. So when you have become proud, you have power, then you don't care for any law. And somebody has to come and punish him. So he killed Ravana also. Namaste Vasudevaya Namaha Sankarsanaya Cha Radhyamnaya Nuruddhaya Satvatampate Namaha So this is the four cardinal forms of Krishna. Vasudeva, Sankarsan, Radhyamna and Aniruddha. And he is called here as the Satvatpati because he was born in the Satvata dynasty. Namo Buddhaya Suddhaya Daitya Dana Vimohine Mlecha Praya Kshatra Hantre Namaste Kalki Rupine. The next is I bow down to Bhagavan Buddha who is Suddha. So Buddha is called Shuddha. Shuddha means pure. So Daitya Dhanava Mohine. So he bewildered Daitya and Dhanava by giving them the wrong philosophy. So those who are against the Vedas, they are called Daityas. Daityas are not that they have some special looks or anything, but they don't follow him. Injunction of Shastra. So then they will be learned. And Mlecha Prayak Shatra Hantre Namaste Kalki Rupane. And Kalki, who will come later, so he bows down to him also, who will kill the Kshatriyas who are more or less like Mlechas. Means they are not following any dharma. So Kalki will come and kill them. Suddhaya Ved Viruddha Shastra Pravat Katvayati Nirdarshaya. So he says that Buddha is called here as pure, although he propagated philosophy which is against Vedas, but still he is pure because his intention was pure. His intention was to be actually establish the true meaning of the Vedas. So he has to bewilder these people who have hijacked the Vedas. Bhagavan Jeeva Lokoyam Mohitastha Mayaya Ahammanetya Sangraho Brahmyate Karmi Vartmasu 
So now, after praying to various forms, and before then the Virat form, and before then the various paths, now he comes to his form. So he informs his own situation and the situation of the people in general. So he said, Bhagavan Jeeva Loko Ayam Mohitastha Maya. So he said that this people here in this natural world, the Jeevas, they are bewildered by your Maya. So Mammaya Dilukteya. Devi Yesha Gunmai. Mammaya Dilukteya. So everybody is under the influence of Bhagavan's Maya. And because of that, Aham Mama Iti Asad Graha. So when we are under the influence of Maya, then what happens? The feeling of I and my comes. So in Yoga Sutra also it is said, Avidya, Asmita, Radha, Dvesha, Abhinivesha, Panchakvesha. So Avidya, Maya, same thing. So because of Avidya, the first thing comes is that I am this body, that is Aham. And then things related to the body is mind. So body is not yours to begin with or to speak of things which are related to body. And this is how the net of Maya spreads around. And we are caught in this. So this is called Asad Graha. That false or wrong attachment. So Graha also means crocodile. And like crocodile catches you. And then you wander on the path of karma. So because of this I, this identification with the material body, then whatever you do with the body, you have to get the result for that. So you get onto the path of karma. And the karma is always following you. So nahi karshikshanam api jatu tishthati a karma krit. You cannot live without doing karma. And whatever karma you do, you have to get the result. And what will be the result that you don't know? Kim karma api, kim karma, kim karma api, kabhi api api mohita. What is karma, what result it will come, what I should do, what I should not do. We think people get bewildered in that. So this is the Asad Graha. And then you are wondering, Brahmyate. So, Yantra Rudhani Maya, Manesha Sthani Indriyam, Prakriti Sthani Karsha. Brahmyam Sridhikani Yantra Rudhani Maya. So he is wondering, taking a ride. Like you say here, that this guy took me for a ride, right? So I like that this body is taking me for a ride. <laughs> so you are wandering. And where are you wandering? On the path of karma. Karma, vartasu. Vartma, vartmasu. Vartma means path. So in the path of karma, you, you are being taken for a ride. So let's go for a nice ride on this highway. So this is the highway of karma. And you are going for a nice ride on it. And then this ride sometimes sukha, sometimes dukha. So I must tutva dukham vigyapati bhagavanati bhagavanati. So after praying to various forms, then he is informing, he is submitting his own plight what is going on here in this material world. So I am cha atma atma jagara dara swajana vishu brahmami shvapna kalpeshu mudha sutta dhya vipho So first he spoke in general, now he speaks specifically about himself. He says that I am not 
separate from this Jeev Loka, these living beings. I am also in the same situation. I am completely absorbed in Atma, Atmada, Agara, Dara, Artha, Pajan. So Atma is children. Then Agar is house, then Dara is Patani, wife, and Artha is wealth, and Sojan is relative. I said I am completely caught up in this net, and I am wandering. It's like a dream, and I am thinking this is all reality. So it's all a dream. All these friends, relatives, wife, husband, children, they come and go, but I'm taking them as my life, right? And taking them as the ultimate truth. This is how I'm wandering. Wandering and wondering what is going on. So this is the wonder of the world. And we'll stop here. There are only few slokas in complete name tomorrow. Six more slokas, five. Any question? Mohini. Pranam Maharaj, I have a question uh, still about Sutra which is arising also from Pradhan and Prakriti. And uh, we said, or you said, that from Mahat, uh, from Chitta, and the Panchabhutas, the Devas, Manas, everything exists in our body. So Sutra is also arising from, is also among them. So my question was like, is Sutra in our body present as the Prana? No, no, Sutra is not Prana. Prana is separate, Sutra is separate. Okay, uh, what is Prana? Prana is Prana. Okay, um, so what is that among those um, ten uh, Panchabhutas and the ten Matras? Um, what is Prana? Is that uh, Vayu? Is that the air, element air? Yeah, there are different opinions. Some people say prana is nothing but vayu. This is how they talk in yoga, etc. But in Bhagavatam, it is separate because there is a separate deity of prana. So prana is also okay, separate so energy. Think of it as separate energy which is carried by vayu. Okay, but so this energy which is carried by vayu is not a material energy which material is arising energy. from the... No, it is all material. Okay, and I I was also uh, thinking about like when Sutra is working on the Ahankar in Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, so I was thinking like is the Sutra providing its functioning, like that the manas just like functions? Think like this, just Think like this, that Prakriti has got Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Okay? Yeah. So from Tamas comes Ahankara. Yeah. From Rajas comes Sutra. From Sattva mm -hmm. comes Mahat. So these are three things. Okay, and what does the Sutra do exactly? Kriya Shakti. Jnana Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Dravya Shakti. These are the three Shaktis. Okay. And um, I had one more, but maybe this is a big uh, topic, like the name, the Harinam, that works directly on Chitta. Is that correct? This Cheto Darpana Marjanam. Works means what? Uh, it cleanses the chitta. Yeah, that's, that's what it's saying. You yourself are saying chitta that's a marjana. What is there Okay. Class? Okay.
can you maybe speak once on this subject more in detail, like why the Harinam is not affecting the other Buddhas and what is the relationship between the Harinam and the Sutra and why the Harinam is directly affecting the Chitta? First of all, do you know what it means directly affecting? You said it cleans. So do you know what it means to clean? Um, it means that it removes the samskaras which are stored in the chitta if so chanted they're to without offense. They're not, they're not stored in sutra, therefore what is there to work on it? Oh, in the sutra it's not stored. They are stored in chitta, you yourself are saying it. Yeah, so you work with, okay. You have a computer. If you want to do some work, you load it with certain program. Mm -hmm. And if there is a virus, that is also there in the same place. So when you have to clean, you say, why you have to? Why do you don't clean the screen? Why are you cleaning the hard disk? Because the virus is in the hard disk, not on the screen. On the screen, it shows the effect. Why you are not cleaning the Mahatattva? Or you are not cleaning this and cleaning that? The point is, where is the problem? That's where you have to clean. Why Harinam is not cleaning your eyes? Because eyes are seeing according to the samskara. So if your samskara is cleansed, then everything else functions accordingly. They get cleaned. Okay, and is this sutra an uh, energy of the Lord or is this uh, Kriya Shakti a uh, material energy, inert energy? Why are you so confused? I don't understand. They are coming from Prakriti, I just said. And Prakriti is material okay. energy. If Mahatattva is yeah. material, and ahankar is material, why is you think that Sutra Atma will become spiritual? I just said that Prakriti has got three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, and from that comes Sutra Atma, Mahat, and ahankar. So what is the conclusion? Okay. Okay, because I was confused because Kriya Shakti if it is inert, how can Kriya, uh, something inert, move something? This is uh, my confusion. So how is that your body is moving? Your hand have the ability to work or not? Yeah, because the soul and Paramatma is there, or because Paramatma is there. So can you write with uh, your by voice? Yeah, but it's no, because no. of the effect what, yeah. of... <laughs> I said, can you write with your nose? Ah, oh, no, I, I did not understand. No, I cannot write Why with my nose. you can write with your nose? Because the soul is there in the body which is giving you the energy. Okay. Because the hand is made for writing. So same with Kriya and with Kriya Shakti does that. Jnana okay, does the I see. does the function of Jnana and Kriya Shakti does the function of Kriya and Dravya Shakti does the function of Dravya, but they work only when Atma is there. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And why is it called Sutra? I mean, the, uh, there is Vedanta Sutra, these are like aphorism, the Yoga Sutras, and while this has also the name Sutra, what it uh, signifies? Sutra has many meanings. Sutra does not only mean this. Sutra comes from Suvinatu, which means to give birth. Kriya Shakti, in that which creates. Yes, thank you very much. Aditya. Hello, no, Babaji. Um, quick question on the verse we just ended on today. So, just for clarity, when we say that the warp, like a dream, this is just referring to its temporary nature and not in its like actual ontological reality. Yes. Ontological dreams are also true, but they are temporary. 
the green level girls too. So, but here, here, the, the it, question. Means, here yeah. it means temporary. The example is given the, in the temporary nature. It, the, the thing is, like, when I've, at least in the past, um, when I've heard about what the definition of a sub is, right, sub is, I've heard in Tatwa Bhoda by Shankaracharya, there's this idea of Trigale Apiteshtati Iti Sat. And so the question is, with this definition of sat, is it po- how, how is it possible to understand, you know, the world as real? if we use this definition without sort of reducing it to then the only thing that that's in past, present, and future is Brahman, for example. So, if that is your definition of Sat, that which exists in past, present, and future, then world is real because it exists in past, present, and future. The only thing is that its name and form change. So, in that sense, it is Sat. Right, I see. So it's not it's not the fact that only that it's not permanent in its name and form and function. Okay. The so name and form change. I see. But the substance behind that remains. Like science also says, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be transformed. So transformation means changing the name and form. Basically, changing the form and form is changed. The name is changed. Can you give the name according to the form. So Prakriti is going through manifestation and unmanifest, uh, unmanifest states, but it is never destroyed. That's why it is real. So the example so, of the like, is given that it's temporary. The name and forms which we think it is mine, that is temporary. It, it, there's like those verses in Chandogya Upanishad, right, where uh, Ashweta Gita is told by his father about how you have gold and then you have like some gold ornament, but actually, you know, if you know, if you know gold, all the or, all the things that are formed by gold, because everything is just simply a transformation of name, uh, of speech rather, all names and forms. So that's why, I guess, in the Advaita interpretation, they say that because gold is the ultimate reality and everything else is, you know, a different form based on speech, that's why only gold is the reality. But yeah, say the here. You see, that, the problem in between the, their explanation, which we don't accept, is that their gold is Brahman, right? And Brahman does not undergo any transformation, which they will also say. So you are giving an example which does not match. Brahman does not undergo any transformation. It is obvious. But they are giving this example of gold to prove that it is all Brahman. So what we say is that it is changing the change. Even what Sankaracharya says in the Drishya Vivek, where he says that asti bhati priyam rupam nam chaiti panchikam adhyotraya brahm rupam and what is it? maya rupam tato dvayam something like that. This is the first sloka of Dhrugdrasya Vivek of Sankracharya. Then there are five things here basically asti bhati priyam and nam and rupam. Asti means existence, bhati means knowledge of whatever is existing. Priyam means liking, and then you have name and form. So he says, first three are the Brahma Rupas. So he is also saying that in this world there is something which sustains. Only thing is that he then he will start saying that this is not Paramarthic and this is only Javaharik and all these distinctions they start making. Then you get. <laughs> So the simple thing is that that God has got material energy and since it is God's energy, it is eternal. And that energy can undergo transformation. And because it undergoes transformation, then it changes and has different names and forms. 
but the energy itself is energy always. Just like you have electricity, so you can create from that heat energy. So that's another form of electricity only. And before that it was magnetic energy, which you turned into. So you are transforming it and calling it different names. But ultimately it is just matter. Okay, Sandeep. So, uh, this uh, uh, prayer the Guru is saying, actually, it is uh, like it's uh, he is depicting uh, our state now, like I am not able to control my senses uh, and he is saying all these things. So, actually, he is depicting a sadhaka's stage to be precise, not exactly saying his own. Uh, because he is he is a mitya yes. uh, and second thing is uh, when he starts uh, this uh, glorification from matsya so is it like that das avatar in that manner or not just necessary. not that man doesn't not necessarily because hagriva is not part of the shanta He mentions Hagriva after Matsya. Anything else? Okay, Vidya Ji. Then there was my chance to listen. You mentioned, must be reading uh, about Lord Buddha. About? Lord Buddha. Buddha means Shuddha. So it's mentioned there that he, although he preached um, against Vedas to betray Asuras, he's still pure because of the purpose he came for. Now my question is whether this can be used, uh, this example of you know sacrificing the need to attain the goal. Uh, in a context of worldwide preaching, where preachers will, you know, teach kusidanta or tapes that are not really uh, correct, but because we preach, let's we can adjust um, teachings. No, okay. For example, you can do it. Sorry? Then you have to be pure first, like Buddha. Then you can do it. He is pure not just because that he is preaching and the purpose is pure. He is pure to begin with. Because he's an avatar of Bhagwan. So he mm-hmm. has no attachments materially, he has no gain from all this. He's coming to do some welfare to humanity. So if you are at that mm-hmm. level then you can do it. But you have so this, just like Krishna so says in Bhagavad Gita that mm-hmm. Yasya Nahan Krito Bhavo Buddhiri Yasya Nadipate Hatwapi Saiman Loka Nahanti na Nibadhyate. That one who is free from this ahankriti, the sense of doership and his intelligence is not implicated. Not implicated mm-hmm. means that I want this, then I'll be happy. If it doesn't happen, then I'm not happy, all these kinds of things. So then he says, even if he kills the whole world, he's not getting any karma for that. So if somebody is situated at that level, then they can do whatever they do, because they will not do anything which ultimately will cause harm. Mm-hmm. When we are not mm-hmm. at that level and we do, our own ego is always mixed with it, whether we mm-hmm. perceive it or not perceive it. Mm-hmm. Because it, ha- it is there. Since I am not elevated to that level, now what does it mean that I am having some material desires, material attachments, mm-hmm. material mind, material likes and dislikes, so they will reflect in my action also. So does this mean that only avatars can do this kind of trick? Or What do you think? 
would have to analyze this verse in quoted from Bhagavad Gita precisely. Yes, why is not very clear? Sorry? Why is not very clear? Yeah, Muffled up. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, well, I will have to. Uh, I don't have an opinion. I will have to study this verse and quote it from Bhagavad Gita and read up more about it to have an opinion. What I, I cannot say what I think. Okay. About who can, who can, and who cannot. But from this, uh, what you just said, it, it's only a Vatara can do that kind of yeah. um, cheating, I would say. So, so if you're not avatar, actually avatar in scriptures, predicted in scriptures, you cannot do that. Is it right? Yes. Um, let me see. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Radhe, Radhe, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity that I could ask a question. Um, I'm trying to still understand uh, the conversation we had uh, about you explaining Anadi or the beginningless. So actually, my, my question is, um, is Mahavishnu actually ever expanding, let's say, new jivas from himself that are coming in contact with Maya? Or this all jivas are there from beginningless, like no new jivas are coming in contact with Maya? Could you explain a bit about this? Because I'm a bit confused with this, like, are there new new jivas manifesting from Mahavishnu at all times, or this is forever there? Like you explained, beginningless. So you have to first deliberate on the meaning of the word unlimited. Just as the concept of beginningless is difficult to grasp, the concept of unlimited or unlimited is also very difficult to grasp. Our mind, as I have said earlier also, it thinks in a limited manner because our experiences are limited. You cannot think what does it mean something is unlimited, unending. Just as it's very difficult to think what does it mean it has no beginning or it has no end. So now when we think that Mahavishnu releases new jivas, we think that the jivas were never in contact with matter. Right? And they are new jivas. They were just lying inside his pocket or somewhere. <laughs> and he got them out. So just think like this, that the jivas are unlimited. And they are conditioned by matter. And we just read also, he said that they are conditioned by Maya, Jiva Loka, right? Maya, Vibha, he said that. So all Jivas, wherever they are, whether they are in the manifest world or they are inside the body of Mahavishnu, they are all having conditioning of Maya. And they are all going through cycles. So just like some Jivas are manifest now, some Jivas are not manifest. Okay? And then out of this some jivas get out and go to the spiritual world. But the sum total always remains unlimited. This is a very bewildering thing. How is that some are going out and still it is unlimited? So out of this some can become unmanifest because of their karma or whatever reason. So they will lie unlim unmanifest. They can lie unmanifest for a very long time. Just like when, you, when the world is dissolved, everybody goes into a manifest state, right? And then when creation happens, not all of them become manifest immediately, right? Gradually it happens. And some can remain only manifest for the whole creation cycle. And then they may, may be coming in the next cycle. So this whole idea that question is asked then, so why if people are getting liberated, gradually this world should become empty and say, no, the more comes. So just understand that the sum total is always unlimited. So some are manifest, some are not manifest. Who is going to become manifest, who is not going to become manifest, that depends on their karma. And that is managed by Paramatma. So who is going to 
Brahma starts creation, not everybody becomes human being. Right? So many people became so many things. So that's why science says that there was water and then fish came and this came. We are also saying the same thing. Only thing is that we accept, we say that this happens by the plan. But then it happens randomly or whatever reason we have. Okay. Mm-hmm.